Okay. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to have today as invited speaker, Paolo Di Tommaso. As you may know already, Paolo is the creator and lead of Nextflow. We have been for many years colleagues in the group of Cedric Notre Dame at the CRG. And this is interesting since actually Nextflow was born to help us, people implementing bioinformatics pipelines to create workflows without taking too much care on how to send jobs to a cluster and so on and so forth. So in fact, it was created to make our life easier. And as some of you also know, Paolo recently left the group to work exclusively on his spin-off, Siquera Labs. This was a pity for us, not so much for him since we no bother him anymore <laughs> with next few questions. And frankly, we are uh, very happy since if I'm not wrong, things are going pretty well. They were recently awarded jointly with NF Core with the Chan Zuckerberg grant, for instance, and the company keeps growing quite fast. Uh, and you already have seen in Evan's presentations that they are providing the community with very nice software as such as Nextflow Tower. And today, Paolo will talk about another recent milestone in the Nextflow project, which was the release of DSL2. Since Proit is much more interesting to hear him, I left the stage to him, so go ahead. Oh, let me show the screen. Yeah, no, 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 not sure that uh, next will make uh, your your work easier, but surely make my work more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but but apart to this, okay. <clears throat> so yes, I think you this week you you talk a lot and discuss a lot about next flow. So I don't want to repeat always the same thing. I want to just try to summarize the the, the main point of the technology to put in the context in the, the presentation about. The, the evolution of Nextflow, what we call DSL2. So what are the, the key points on, on Nextflow? Nextflow, the idea of Nextflow is to, to have a unique tool that try to make it possible to solve different pro problems, uh, to simplify the, the, the writing of complex data analysis pipelines, but at the same time to, to, to enable the scalability of these pipelines by different infrastructure. So we wanted to have an easy way to write the code that potentially can be written many different fragment language and have many of these tasks to be incorporated into a single pipeline script that allows you to, to run this pipeline without having to, to rewrite um, this command, this command line tool that you want to use using the host fragment language like, like it can be required to use the other technology, like I don't know, Apache Spark or MapReduce. It's not idea, the idea of next row, just to take the existing script to incorporate into your pipeline and then make it possible to, to, to orchestrate the execution of this task uh, and to run your your uh, your data analysis pipeline also using a high level programming model. This is also very important because the parallelization is a central point in modern data analysis pipeline because we need to, to analyze very large data set. And so the only way to, to make it possible in a timely manner using uh, uh, many different computer all together to speed up the execution. There are different ways to, to do that. And we use these uh, data flow program model that allows you to declare the parallelization of your task uh, using a declarative approach, basically just say uh, which are the dependencies between the different tasks. Next row is able to run uh, them in a parallel manner, taking care of all the complicated part, managing the, the synchronization, the orchestration, Try avoiding the, the risk condition, the, all the, the possible conflict between uh, file name and files having the same name. So it's an easier way to coordinate, to parallelize the execution of uh, your data analysis pipeline. And another central point into Nextflow was to <clears throat> give the ability to isolate the task execution, each other, and also making them self-containing containing in the term of dependencies. What does it mean? That we can create an uh, uh, executable package that allows you to run the task in your workflow that contains all the dependencies 
the, the task required to be executed. So the tools that need to be executed. And this is very important because that means that the creator of the data analysis path on the pipeline can uh, ship along with the code of the pipeline also all the tools, the binary tools that are needed to run the pipeline. This makes it possible to replicate the execution of the pipeline in any platform without having to install all the dependencies one by one. And we have shown why this is very important because apart from simplify uh, in an incredible way, uh, the work, the people that need to run this pipeline are different uh, in a different infrastructure, but above all, because make it uh, reproducible. And the meaning of that, the, the, may, the biggest issue with this, uh, this, this, this kind of analysis, they, they have so many dependencies that it's practically impossible to replicate the exact installation in a different uh, infrastructure if you don't have uh, a model like this. And if you don't use this approach, what, what is going to happen that actually you introduce a subtle difference, maybe in a, a piece of software into a library, into a tool, uh, then impact the final result on the data analysis pipeline. So the container uh, is a key point that was uh, embraced by Nexo since the beginning, and now becoming it become mainstream technology or modern platform for the, for the, for, for pipeline use container in particular uh, cloud platform like AWS Batch, Google Life Science, Azure Batch, etc. So this is uh, a key element to, uh, to to organize your workflow. Another center point is also the ability to deploy the pipeline in an uh, abstract way from the execution platform so that you can um, write your, your code, maybe in your laptop, on your workstation, and then being able to, to run your you know, organizational HPC cluster, that could be Slurm or the Green Engine, something like this, and at the same time share maybe with other colleagues that maybe may, may use other technology. So Nextflow allows this, uh, keeping separated, strictly separated the, the pipeline logic from the, the deployment logic, the pipeline. Um, and finally, the ability to uh, to to track all the, the version of uh, the changes in your source code using a version control like uh, Git and platform like GitHub, GitLab, Gitbucket. And this is important not just because uh, in this way you can track the changes in the code, but having a built-in support into Nextflow, we can control other than the code, also the configuration files of the pipeline, and above all, the the link with the container. So using this mechanism, Nextflow is able to replicate the exact execution or your analysis, not only at the level of the code, but also the, uh, of the related binary dependencies, making possible the replicability that I was mentioning before. And finally, yes, uh, it's important also to mention this uh, key component of the success of the tool being open source, uh, technology uh, that you can download uh, from GitHub uh, to use, but also to modify, maybe to adapt to your project or if you want to also to contribute uh, some specific component that you may need to 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 to, to run Nextflow in your infrastructure. So these are the, the, the main pieces that we have in this technology. Uh, here there are just some numbers that show how it's uh, progressing the, the adoption of the tool. We have something like fifty thousand downloads per month. Even though the last month we had a huge peak, I'm not sure that it's going to be uh, continuous over time because it was very impressive. But I think this is more likely or a, a mistake or some kind of bot that downloaded automatically. We will see it continue to grow like this. And um, but also. Uh, the, 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 the adoption of the tools uh, demonstrated by the number of people that visit uh, the website, uh, more than 6,000 users every month. We organize 60 international workshop, three international symposiums. So there is really a big community around this technology. This is very 
find the, the most interesting part, uh, especially for me. And uh, this is also reflected in the adoption, not just in the, in the academia, but also there are a lot of um, private company uh, a, or a big organization that use Nextflow uh, here in production pipeline. So this is important to, to stress that the, the stability of the tool uh, is not just some um, experimental research project. So, but let's come back to the, the main topic to uh, on the presentation that is about Nextflow. Um, what is, what, not Nextflow, is the DSL2. Right? What is DSL2? Basically, um, is an evolutionary extension of the original Nextflow syntax that was created to make it possible to Load the definition or reusable modules and components uh, into your uh, data analysis pipelines. And when I, I was trying to, to, to introduce this feature, I realized that it, this was going to, to be a completely different way to, <clears throat> to run actual pipeline. This is why it was decided to call it DSL2, so domain specific language version two. This can seem, can seem a bit uh, discouraging because you are investing a lot of time to, uh, to, to, to learn Nextflow. And so now maybe you may think, okay, but now I, I need to learn one more time from scratch because this is a new language. The nice part that this is uh, a different way to write Nextflow pipeline, but at the same time, there are very minimal changes and above all, the core paradigm, the core concept in Nextflow does not change at all. So, but, Everything you know so far is, is the, the most important thing. And we will see how we make uh, this, 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 this change to the new syntax in a, a smooth manner. So let's back to the basic. <clears throat> I want to run this task or, or uh, like this many, many others in my pipeline. What I have to do? I can take this one liner and I wrap into a an extra process, I think what we have seen so far. So I have my script, I define the input of the, of the task, the output of the task, and the central point here is what controls the execution uh, of the task is the channel. So the channel bring a piece of data that allows me to trigger the execution of the task. And the main idea on Nextflow like, so that I can replicate, I can launch many execution on this task only changing the source of the channel. So in this case, I'm saying I want to take all the fast few files in this pattern, and then what Nextflow is doing is launching many parallel execution of this task for each file that there is in the path. So this is the core idea. Nothing changed about this, and this is the most important thing to, to know. And then we are, uh, what is the Nextflow pipeline? It's just a composition, many of these processes that are linked in this manner. Uh, we have a channel that is produced by the execution of this task that is linked here like an input. So we establish a relationship and now the process index sample depends on to the process aligned line sample. And the problem is, the problem is that this paradigm is very easy, make it possible to read the, 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 the code in a quick manner, but when I have to scale the application in something much bigger, like these cases, in these cases, it is more complicated because it become more difficult to keep into a single script all that process definition. So also it's difficult to, uh, to keep track of the flow in your pipeline. And uh, this, is, this is why the, 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 the tool was not thought for, for such a, a, a complex uh, workflow. Uh, the idea was to have just a single script that allow you to see all the common lines one after another. So, so to, to have a, a quick idea uh, on your workflow script. So how we can change this model instead to make it possible to write uh, models that can be shared across um, different uh, workflow script and reuse and also to make more readable. Uh, the workflow definition. So this is what we yeah, well, was showing before. I have two processes defined like this. I have an output that produce this file that goes into the channel. And we 
this is what I was showing before, I have the Devon to express this manner. To make this task now as independent module, the idea is just to remove the declaration of the channel that I, I was, we were using in XTO in the first, in the original syntax uh, from, 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 from the process definition. Doing that now, I have the, the, the possibility to declare two tasks without establishing a, uh, in, the pro, in the workflow definition how they communicate. Now they are independent. So I can reuse in principle, uh, like module, they can import in my project and reuse, uh, and reuse independently. So the point is now, these are two isolated process definition. How I can reassemble the logic uh, that there was before, because the logic here on the, the channel was make it possible to clear the dependencies between these, these two stars. So next law was making possible the, was linking the, the execution one after another. And what he, we, the, 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 the idea was just to create a new uh, execution context that we call workflow that allows me to use this process definition like a uh, custom function or routine that can be invoked with parameter and the parameter are exactly the same channel that we were using before. So the difference is this, I remove the, process, the, the channel declaration from the process the process became uh, something that I can invoke like a console function and they accept parameter, the parameter that are defined like the input here. This is DSL2 in a nutshell. And uh, of course there are many, many other things that I'm now I'm going to, to show uh, one by one, but this is the, the central idea basically. And the following step is how to reference the output of the on the process, and um, like in this case, this process has an output that is one file. Another process has an input and output. And what they can do now is to use the first process in both the execution of this process, and then maybe in the second one, I can reference the output of the full execution with just the dot out property. This allows me to access to the channel that was declared here. And this is how we can compose also uh, the different processes together, referencing the output of the, uh, the previous one using this property. Each uh, process has implicitly defined this out attribute and allows us to, to access the, the, output, the output channel. And in the same manner, I can use also uh, name identifier for the output. And to do that, what uh, the, the syntax change is just adding this keyword emit, and then can define the name of the, the channel that they want to use externally. So here in this case, I have an output that is a path, is doing emit sample bar, and then I will be able to do foo.out and then I can use this name, this name is the channel, and then I can continue to apply the next operators or to use you know, another process, et cetera. And this is maybe even more useful when I have more than one output because I will be able to say, to say full out this, to full out that, et cetera. And since it is going to be a bit boring to listing all these things one after another, it's that might be more interesting to see more in practice how to, to work with, with this uh, new syntax. There are maybe some questions or not chat. Um, please just look and we can ignore. I think that okay. there are no questions. I, if I see anything, I, I tell you. Oh, okay, thanks. Just so perhaps one. I jump to, to the editor. I wanted to show how uh, modify an existing an existing pipeline. Let's copy maybe this one main in original MF and then opla. And then we can we can we can start with the 
uh, this small RNSC pipeline that usually we use for, for demoing. And let's remove the copyright you think are not needed. And this is just a small pipeline, which there are some parameter declared at the beginning. They just a log file, they show the, the parameter. Here there is a channel definition in which I take the reads files and then create two channels. Here we see one of the one most disturbing thing in Nextflow uh, uh, DSL one. So they need to create different copy of the same channel when I need to use it in different processes. And the good news that in the new syntax, this is not needed anymore. We will see how to get rid of this. Here, basically we have uh, four tasks. One that is just creating a Transcriptome file from the Transcriptome file and um, then create the, the binary index file using Salmon. Then there is the quantification step that take the output from the previous task, it was the read period files, and then let's continue to use Salmon this way. And but this is how you see that you need to to use this hand that is trying to handle to see how the there is the, the flow between the different tasks. Until the pipeline is more like this, it's not a big problem. So I can easily see that. For example, also the output of the quantification task goes into the, the following task that is multi QC. Um, but like I was telling you before, when it's much bigger, become more complicated. So let's try to, to change uh, this to what I was telling before. What I need to what we need to do is just removing all the front declaration here and the into the declaration as well. And then we need to recompose into a workflow scope. We can remove this. Also, we can remove this. Give me why if you have a question, just raise your hand, workflow. And the first one we said was index. So index is taking an input declaration that is this one, and what I need to do is to just specify a transcription file like a, the, an argument of this function invocation. Okay, this is enough to, to try the execution on May and now. Uh, now it's not going to work because I forgot to specify what that I want to use the new syntax. So to make it, compatible, Nextflow compatible with previous generation without breaking any, any existing script, we added this flag and make it possible to, to, to switch from one version to another, keeping, maintaining the compatibility with the existing project. So if you want to run, if you want to use this, this, this syntax, you have to enable this minor or even, oops, the bug no. Or oh, even using the common line DSL tool. Okay, it's complaining because exactly what I was telling before, the into is deprecated, actually is not working anymore. So how to solve this? We don't need anymore, and we can just replace this into with just one set. Let's try again. Oh, now is the classic problem that some is common not found because I want to use Docker to run this pipeline. Here we go. Okay, let's make this permanent. I will change the configuration to say that I want Docker enabled, true, and also I want to make resume the default, so I don't have to specify all the time. Excellent, so we managed to run our first DSL2 script that consists only replacing the into a from uh, 
China Declaration with a proper workflow scope in which now I can reassemble the, uh, the, the workflow definition. The other task was the quantification. The quantification is taking uh, two inputs that the, the index produced by the previous uh, task execution and then the read periods. So here we can see what I was mentioning. Now I can say index.out and I want to take the channel that the read period CH. Nope. Let's try again. Okay, voila. I'm qualified. Okay. So we are set so, to sorry, discover Paolo, new I, this is one question from, yeah. from Andrea. Hi, Please. Paolo. So, sorry Hi. to interrupt. Hi. Um, the workflow, so we have the processes, and then you added the workflow, but the workflow isn't kind of uh, duplicating what is in the processes? Is it redundant or not? I, I haven't no, understood. I what do you mean for duplicating? So uh, what, um, what is the goal that you have with adding the workflow, the, the workflow there in the end? Yeah, the, the goal is to allow me to, to express the relationship between the different processes because before that information was given by the, the different input of the channel that was linking all the processes together. But since we want to make this component now uh, reusable, we cannot link in a hard manner like we were doing before. And since we have any more the information that the quantification is communicated with the index, the, the, the alternative is to use this, 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 this syntax. So I have a, a workflow in which I specify how these processes are uh, invoked in each other. The meaning that here I'm saying that I run in the task index and then I'm taking the output of the task index to call the task quantification. That's this answer. Yes, yeah, so now the processes are kind of modules and in the workflow we decide yeah. which models we want to use in which order and yeah. what kind of... Exactly, we have to think the process now like a custom function that uh, execute the command that you define here. So it's really a, a custom function. Okay, That Thank a you. parameter and produce something. So, There's another question from Daniel. Yeah. So maybe we can. Yeah, thanks. Because <laughs> I thought if there's hey. a question option, I can also use that time. <laughs> thanks. Um, I have a question about the order in the input from the workflow. You have now in the quantification process, you have index out and read pairs uh, channel. Is the order depending? So meaning if I would add something into the process upstream, would I break then the workflow? So or does next flow recognize in which which channel I would like to put into which input of, of that process. Um, so I would this mix is, um, the order down it's, there. It's a, po a positional declaration. They mean that each line must match a channel. So in since I have an input that is a file index, here I need to, the first argument must be a channel that will bring this file. And since the second line is a tuple containing a pair that is a value and a file, the second argument must be a channel that brings a pair, mm. a tuple, and so on. If I continue with another file, the quantification will take a third argument that is a channel bringing a file. So it's exactly the same thing as before. The only ch change is that now the channel are passed like an argument, keeping the position that I, how, how it is specified in the, the declaration, basically. Mm -hmm. So that means I have to memorize the order in the input of yes. the process. Yes. So there is no and chance to I, name it somehow to make it more robust, like uh, input. Yeah, it has been proposed. Now is not possible. Mm -hmm. 
Also, we think that uh, at the end, the positional approach is the most common that you have in any programming language. So if we have done this for ages in Python, Java, Perl, whatever, we can continue to do this also into next row, even though I start to see a very large process in which can be confusing to, yes, to match the proper position. I think we have to find an alternative way that is not either the name approach because also the name can become very boring to start to have to type all the name here and then also when you are going to invoke. This is something that we, we need to still find out maybe the, the perfect solution. But for now, the positional uh, approach is the, the, the way to go. Mm -hmm. So, okay, thanks. Okay. So, why is failing now? It's failing because I need to specify in a more strict manner that I want to use a, a, a value. So, in, pre in the previous syntax, this was a kind of optional thing, but it turns out that this was creating some ambiguities. People was asking, oh, why here there is val, here there is no val. So, uh, at the end of the day, now you have to specify when you have a tuple in an explicit manner, the type of the element. Instead, before it was optional. And this is why now it's failing. So maybe let's see also something here to do, val like this. And this is okay. Let's try it again. Okay, it's working. So let me see now executing the index, the quantification like before. Also, the, 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 the first one was cache. Perfect. Uh, I was expecting. Then we have the fast queue C, and the fast queue C was taking the read pairs. Oh, here we see that. Now we can use the read pairs channel twice, like an input, in two different processes. Before this was not possible. Instead, now it's perfectly, perfectly fine. We don't need this. Excellent. And then what we have? Then we have the multi QC, the multi QC. That I was taking two arguments. Let's open the original one because this is the, the only bit complicated original. If you remember, the original one was where is the one that you see? There was T channel composed this line that can be a bit complicated. But what is saying this? This is saying that the quantification CH that was created before. Here, quantification CH is mixed with the output of the fast Q C uh, process. So in this way, we create a channel that contains both output, but at the same time, I want to gather all the elements uh, in a single shot. So I use the collect. So how to use in the new version? The same manner. The same manner, but just changing the equivalent uh, output. So this is become quantification task output that I mix with the fast QC output. And then I do collect again. And the second argument, I just put in two lines to make it a bit more readable. The second one was the multi QC file. I can use the same way here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, voila. Yeah, the, the new pipeline is working like before. Um, but so what, what's the benefit of this approach? It is still a small pipeline, maybe it's not a big, big impact, but the main benefit is that now I have just um, five, six, seven lines of code that allows me to summarize the overall execution of this workflow. I have the index execution that they take this file, the quantification take the, e, the output or the index and use the read pairs. 
the fast QC just use the red pairs and then the multi QC take the output of the quantification, the output on the fast QC, gather all together and then run multi QC. So it's a much more concise way to express this logic. And then we can have all these tasks that are declared independently. And this is the, 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 the core of the SL2. Let's see, there are some questions. No, okay. Yes, perhaps one question. Yeah. Uh, it has also an impact on the organization of the code. Here you have put all in the same file, but wouldn't we, uh, doesn't it also um, push to, to extract some parts and... Uh, of course, that is what we are going to, to see right now. Okay. Pa Paolo, we have to put the workflow in the end or could we put oh. the workflow in the beginning and the processes yeah, yeah. after? Let's try. I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember. I think it should work, also the same. Yes. Yes, you can put everywhere, but at the end, I found it more logical to put at the end. Okay. In Pro, you would put it in the beginning and then the, the routines after. That's why I was asking. Yeah, as well, it's still <laughs> working out. Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. Good. So, yeah, thanks. A long time, 20 minutes, so, but I should, we should be able to, to show that the, the, the still what the most important part. So the point is now the models, we, so we see how we can decompose the, 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 the pipeline and have a separate workflow. And now, yes, we want to organize these independent file that they can reuse these models into different workflow script. So how to create a model? Nothing special. A model is just an extra script which contains one or more processes, nothing more. And then I can include this module, this next process from another script, say include the name of the component that I want to, to include from file name. The only important thing to know here is that the file name must be relative. You cannot put an absolute path. So you have to express a dot slash something or dot dot slash something. And uh, why this? To avoid uh, workflow that start to use absolute path because then what happened? Then uh, that absolute path works only in your computer, so make it useless. Instead, we want to make it possible that we can dis distribute the workflow and the models uh, all together. And this is how we can organize so separate the files. So and then the models is a file or more that contains one process, more processes that we include in this manner. Obviously, obviously I can include more than one uh, processes. I can have more than one include uh, directive that allows me then to, to invoke this, uh, the, the, the process that I'm including. And um, what if there, is, there are two process in two different modules with the same name. I can create an alias. Let me imagine that I have foo in this and foo in the other module that is that. I can rename foo as bar and then can continue to use uh, foo and bar in this manner, but the original one would be the one with the same name. And interestingly, I can do this even for the same module in the same, in the same process in the same module. Oh, it's not shown here, but I could call this with a, even a different name. And this would allow me to, to call the same process twice because this is okay. This is important to, to stress. In principle, once you can use a process only once, you cannot continue to use the same process to put into a loop. I'm sorry for, for look at the, uh, I guess I'm still waiting for this, but it's not going to happen. But what you can do is to give a process, another name with this alias, and then you can call twice or one more time uh, inside the same scope. And uh, 
models can have parameter like any other next to a script. It's nothing new here. So I can declare at uh, the beginning of my model. There are these two parameters and I can use in the process. What is going to happen is that when I include the model from the main script, the model inherits the parameter coming from the uh, from the, the external one that is including the, the, the workflow. So when I'm going to execute this, we'll say hola mundo, because the parameter came from here are injecting the model. So this parameter would be the one exposed by this context. And there is also other mechanism to override uh, explicitly or pass some explicit parameter. I think I haven't put here, ah, yes, I have put here. You can say alt param uh, something and you override only that one. And uh, like before, let's see in practice, how does it work very quickly? But it is very effective. So what we can do, we just take everything like this. And we put in our code library, and that um, declare here, and it only to declare these params that I was referencing here in the beginning. Params, okay, I can decide to give it a default results. Fine, I have created my model. So, what I have to do now is to include my Model. I want to include the index task. No, e index task multi QC, fast QC, and uh, boom, 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 fast QC quantification. Quantification. Yeah. Dot library. And else. Oh, the essential is optional. And then, okay, we have to include the parameter, the log, the channel, and the main logic. That is, let's try to run again. No, can't find a matching model for refi library. It didn't say. Library, ah, it's a typo. Wrong. Here we go. So now we have this library containing this task. Like I can I can use any workflow that I want. And um, I can create a library with a single process, many process depends by you. There is not a explicit uh, um, constraint on this. Paolo, there is one question from Luca. Yeah. Yep. Hi, Paolo. Uh, yep. Just a question about the concept of modules. You, you state that the modules are basically processes, no? Are? Processes. Are what? Property? Pro processes. Processes. I'm not understanding what you mean. Processes. Um, ah, processes, yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, what about instead uh, uh, as a workflow, a named workflow that you can put apart, or, or you okay. need? Next slide. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the, anybody else, no? So yes, the, the point now is how to organize just this for uh, a library or a module containing processes, but what we want to do for some workflows. Okay, the concept is basically really the same. Well, what is changing that so far, we were just using, say, using workflow without any name, without any name, and this is the one that is executed when you run the next flow script. But you can give to a workflow also a name, and that allows you to create a component. These are uh, uh, some workflow that you can use like um, a process in your pipeline. So I could say that I have a sub workflow that is my pipeline that is calling these two uh, processes. Or 
Okay, now here I will show you how to use parameter or declare inputs into a, a workflow, a sub workflow. Here, for example, I have two sub workflow, one through one flow two. Here I'm just showing that I'm using the parameter to uh, create a conditional execution from the for the process bar. Here instead I'm showing how to to define a proper input this workflow. What is the difference? The difference is that Doing this approach, this workflow depends in the external context within this. And instead of doing this, I'm declaring an input and that should be passed when I call this workflow. So this is becoming something similar to what we were doing with the process input. This is the equivalent take, is the, the equivalent for input for a workflow, basically. And at the same manner, I can define the output workflow. So I can say take, I, uh, I can say emit, meaning that this workflow executes something and then produce emit the output of bar. Or I can even give a name assigning this to a variable. So what is going to happen? In the first case, flow when I call flow one, I will be able to access the output flow one the usual mechanism dot out and then apply an operator or using a different uh, process workflow execution. In this case, since I said emit my data equals something, I can say, I think here there's a typo here, it should be flow to dot out dot my data like in the process version. And but also here, let's see on fly in practical term, does it work? So exactly, we have this, we want to convert into a um, RNSA flow. Uh, the problem now depends, okay, let's see also what is happening. If I try to run a, this, if I try to run, happens nothing because by default, next flow only runs the workflow oh, here without any name. So what I could do, I could do this, or flow, or a sick flow. And this can be a way that you can uh, re-execute the same uh, workflow passing different, uh, different data. But still, I need a way to parameterize now this guy, this workflow component. Also note how the name of the, the workflow became a scope basically in the in the process name. Now we are executing RNSA, RNSA flow index, RNSA flow quant. This is also why it was not cached because this is a, a fully qualified process name basically. It since has a different process name, invalidate the cache. Let's declare that this is a proper workflow with proper inputs. I want to say that take a transcript tone. So I replace this with this. And also when I specify a take, now I, I need clearly separate the body of the workflow using main. Otherwise there is no way for next flow to understand where the take ends and where uh, the, the, the body of the implementation begins. So we need to say main, that is the other part. The other part that we need to replace is the, the read per channel. And we want to say that this is our uh, book reads, is uh, just a parameter. So now this uh, RNSIC um, sub workflow is an independent model because take two parameter, we use the transcript of here, we use the read here, and then it, it continue in an independent manner. And now I should pass this transcript on file here and read per ch here, this manner. And uh, yes, run. Okay. And I could even now even, uh, put this into a separate file, RNAC uh, flow and math. I need to take the, the all the uh, include I was doing here. Instead of here, I have to include RNAC flow 
from uh, RNLC flow and math. These are defined here, and voila. Now, I have the inclusion of the model, so next row will note that these are so, some model. I have the definition, the input. Uh, I think it's fine. So my workflow now becomes this part and then the parameter declaration and uh, the channel definition and just this. No, it's missing what you can see. Oh, okay. Okay, this is interesting. I don't want to put Maticus here. Let's do this, it will be useful later. So we want to keep this uh, subword flow only quantification, uh, quant index quantification step at the fast QC uh, process execution. Instead, I want to run Maticus here. As a result, on the result of the pipeline execution, sorry. So now we need to take the output of this. How we can do that? We can do, say, emit. I want to take this like an output here. So the workflow, RNSIC flow, execute this and then emit the quantification like before output, mix it with the fast QC output and collect it together. We come back here. So now RNA seq flow out and then cool. Ah, he's missing the, the include the multi QC. We have eight minutes more. What? Eight minutes more we have to finish. Oh, okay. Okay. I think this is showing how we can re reorganize basically not just the processes in separate library, also sub workflow in separate library or sub workflow. You can have this organization or another variation or different sub workflow and you can include each other. Obviously you can compose also sub workflow with sub workflow. There is no limitation on what you can do uh, from this point of view. Uh, it, it is quite powerful. Uh, I have to say that I am the first one to be, to, to be amazed when, when I see the possibilities that are, that are possible using this organization. And uh, since we are Level time, another nice thing to mention is also these five operators. This is just syntax sugar for the same for the same logic. I can express the combination of channel operators and processes using the pipe. So this is just another way to compose the execution of this task. So I take the channel, I piping exactly in the same um, functional logic that there is in Linux and Bash to do this. I'm having this to full. This is a process taking one input. So I have a tree full execution that I'm concatenated with the map and then applying the view operator. And here I'm just showing how to, uh, to do this into uh, different formatting of the, of the code. And uh, how it can be useful in this example pipeline. For example, here we could change this into pipe mix and collect. So when you pipe this component, you don't have to use the parentheses because the, the invocation is implicit. So we have this syntax that is very similar to the Linux pipe, also with the semantic because at the end, these are a parallel execution, even though here there is a, a logical streaming instead next to, yes, next to this a logical streaming instead, instead uh, we Linux, we have byte streaming that is a completely different thing. So don't confuse the two, two stuff. Five minutes to, to mention a completely different thing. Uh, uh, continuous request in next slope was, oh, we want dry run. 
Drag around you know, if somebody does not know what, what does it mean. Drag around means that the ability to execute a workflow simulating the execution, but without carrying out the real computation because we want to, to see what tasks are going to be executed, which files are going to be, be used, etc. Next flow, this is going to be a, a problem. It is a problem because it uses a model that make it not possible to implement because you use this streaming model in which you don't know the end of the computation until there, there is a real end. This is one problem. And the other problem is that the output of the task are result when the task is executed. Imagine something like this in which you have a process that declare an output, the star.txt, star.bound, whatever you want. The point is that we know which are the real files. They can be one, two, 10, 100, I don't know. Depending the, 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 the actual command that is executed here. So I cannot, uh, it cannot be known in advance before the real pipeline execution. But how to simulate something similar? Well, the idea was to add another uh, definition that we call stub. <clears throat> stub basically is a piece of code that uh, need to simulate the execution of the real task. And so you can create this to create a fake task execution. You can create this for one task or all tasks in your pipeline. And then when you want to simulate the execution of this workflow, you can use this option minus sub or minus run sub, something like this. And what the next row is doing is just replacing the, um, the real script execution with the stub, with the subscript. So this is a kind of trick, and yeah, it's very powerful. So has also some, I think some uh, better uh, application than the dry run, because the dry run allows you to simulate the execution, but it's not really executing them. Using the stub, instead we can really simulate uh, fake execution running the task, it is can be useful to um, mimic the pipeline execution maybe into a cloud environment. It is usually uh, quite complicated to set up in all the different aspects, permission, uh, buckets, container. Using this approach, you can try a fake execution into a target environment without touching the real data, which will trigger the execution of million of jobs. Another nice uh, implication of this approach of the stub execution is the ability to quickly prototype your pipeline. You could try to, uh, you have a, maybe a process idea of the pipeline you want to run, you want to write, but you don't know all exact all the exact commands that are used in this pipeline, but you uh, may know what this, this command are going to produce. So you could, sketch the pipeline definition just using the stub, create the, the, the complete workflow execution, simulate the complete workflow execution. And when you are so sure that the logic is as you are expecting to work, then you can replace the real command. This is, was an idea that was suggested to us so, 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 so here, some years ago during a workshop the, with a person who was doing this approach uh, using the real script, it, it turns out to be very powerful. It can be a nice way to prototype next for execution in this manner. And uh, I think we are running down out of time. I think also perfect timing with a few seconds for some questions. And um, okay. Okay. Are there any questions? No, but in any case, very nice presentation. And this last future, it's very nice. So we don't have much time for, for questions, but there have been already some during the oh, session. <laughs> and yeah, because we have to start the other one since we are streaming in YouTube, no. but we will open a breakout room. And in case someone is interested, if you, if you could uh, join Paolo, they okay. can continue discussing with you there. I will not be able to, to join because I'm sharing the oh, session. I can join, but... I can join. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. I mean, okay. maybe we have time Thanks for a, a lot. Okay, now we can share my video. Thanks okay. a lot for, for inviting and organizing this.